guys, it's Kelly with Embroidery Nurse. So let's talk about samples. Samples are something that every shop will have to do at some point so that they can get their products listed on any site that you plan to sell, whether it be on Facebook, Etsy, Amazon, or just simply on the marketplace. So I've got lots of different ideas and examples of how I've done samples in the past. A lot of people you'll see will stitch out in the beginning samples just on um, just fabric that they have. And you can see what I've done here is I've just taped it in the back, made it a perfect little rectangle so it would be good for pictures, and I stitched it out. And so this was a couple of years ago where I did several of these for an upcoming holiday, and I quickly learned I don't like this method. Reason being, this takes a lot of time and I've used, you know, my own supplies and this is going to nobody. So they're really just for no one. And I don't have anywhere to display these. So that was just really for a one-time picture. Um, but it is a good way if you want to just get some quick product photos out there that look professional. And um, I just used like a jersey knit that I got at Joanne Fabrics. So this is definitely an option. It's just not the one that I use now. I found ways that are a little bit more creative and uh, ways that I can actually not lose money. I might break even, but that's okay. But these, I was kind of losing money on the time and the fact that these really went to no one. One thing that some people will do is literally stitch out for their own family members. So I've got, this is the dirtiest shirt literally it has stains all over it but this was for my son Thomas this was his Valentine's shirt a couple years ago these stains were never to be removed after his Valentine's party but at least this served a purpose this was for my son to use and it served as my product photo for that year and I still use it to this day. Here's another example of a family member. Um, and I just got the shirt back when they were done with it because, you know, it's too small and what, they weren't doing anything with it. But it just allows, you know, your product sample to actually go to use and somebody actually wearing it. So I love that when you can do it for your own family. Um, you look on some Instagram sites for some um, embroidery companies and you will literally see the same name over and over and over or the same initials over and over and over. And that gives you a good idea. They're probably doing it for their family members. One other way, just do it for myself. Y'all, this is new. I literally stitched this today, but oh my goodness, it's a Bermuda bag. Seriously? So that sample, um, thank you, is going to be mine because I'm going to use it and I just love it. And this will go to great use. I'll get good pictures out of it and then I get to use it because it is the sweetest little thing in the world. So you can do it for yourself and that's a win-win. So here's a couple other examples. The other day was World Cancer Day and I'm trying to stay up with my, um, you know, posting on social media and I realized I have had this design for probably two years and I've never stitched it out. So for this, I don't generally do this. I stitched out on a shirt that I had in stock that I had several in stock of. So I wasn't, you know, going to take away from somebody else's order. And I went ahead and just stitched it out. And now what I've done is I've posted it in my Facebook group to ask anybody a 12 month shirt, $10 sample sale, and it's theirs. So someone's going to use it, but I needed this one immediately. So I needed to go ahead and just have it so I could put it out there on World Cancer Day and have something cute. And this shirt, by posting it on that day, I, I think I sold eight different shirts with this design on it. So I knew like immediately that that paid for itself. So this was just a shirt I had in stock that I was able to stitch out for a specific day and I needed it right away. So that's an option. Let's talk about mess ups now. Come on now, you know, we all do it. We don't like to admit it, but this is such a beautiful, this is a, a pillow. It's a linen hem stitch pillow and I absolutely love these. I don't have the insert in here. That's why it's looking pretty flat, but it looks beautiful. And I actually have taken this when I've done um, shows and I've also used this for product um, pictures, placement, put it, you know, next to um, some, you know, pretty bedding or whatnot. And it's made for really pretty pictures. What you don't know, unless you pick it up and turn it around, is there's a big old gaping hole in the back right here where I actually, um, not the part where you stick the, um, the pillow in, but an even bigger hole. 
this is this happened when I um, I didn't realize that this part had gotten stuck to the back of the frame and there was no way of salvaging it. I tried, but you know, when you're using linen and this the, this fine, you know, linen that's used for hem stitch items, um, you, you, a lot of things are not salvageable. So I knew right away that, yep, yeah, this one wasn't gonna be going to a customer, but I saved it and it's provided a really nice um, example when I'm in person or just for product pictures. So any of those mess ups that you have, save them. I promise you'll put them to good use. Another example of something very similar, um, this beautiful um, hem stitch napkin or guest towel actually, um, when I embroidered it, I got the, the initials backwards. So I wasn't really paying attention and um, their initials actually uh, were L, B, J, with the J supposed to be in the middle. So I knew right away, this is beautiful. You know, when I have gone to shows, these are, you know, big sellers that I can, you know, make on the spot. And so I have this as an example. So two types of mess ups. This one still looks good. Um, it just is the wrong initials. Maybe I can find somebody with those. And then this one was truly, you know, an error where it was cut. <laughs> so save your mess ups, you'll, you'll use them later. This is an example of one time I had um, all of these monogram frames, well I still do, monogram frames that I had just stored away, kept buying them, you know, and wanting to try them out. Well, I looked over in my, you know, stockpile of stuff, merchandise and inventory, and realized I had a lot of linen hemstitch napkins. So I put up a sample sale in my group and basically said, I pick the design, I'll send it to you $5 plus shipping. So these towels wholesale cost me about $3. So it covered the fact that they, they bought this. We, I broke even in the end and I had all of these, you know, frames that I had purchased in advance and they had just been sitting there making no money. So I, what I did is, you know, I, I had to cut off that post because I had literally like 25 people respond like instantaneously. Cause of course you want a cute monogrammed, you know, guest linen towel for your house uh, for $5. Um, so it was a win-win for sure for everybody. And I got to test out a lot of different styles and then take great product photos of them. Um, the reason I kept this one is because I didn't actually like the way it stitched out. So I didn't end up sending this, but it gave me an opportunity to stitch it out, um, try it out. And I just kind of kept it as an example. Um, I just didn't like the way the finished product looked on there. It just, to me, didn't come out the way I had hoped it would on this material. Um, so that was a really fun way to do it. Just, you know, post a sample sale and people love when you talk about sale of any kind or VIP or extravaganza. Using those words, people jump on it. At least in my group, they do. So the other idea, I've literally had these forever and I've never done anything with them. I've never even posted about them. So they've just been sitting on my um, shelf over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch a cute little Easter bunny on one of these and um, I might do um, you know something else Eastery for this or maybe another holiday I'm not sure and then I'll post these again just to clear it out so that I don't have this inventory just sitting there and then I'll at least break even or make a few dollars off of that so that's a great way to do that as well um, I had I wanted to add these to um, things that I sold so I put again a sample sale in my group and pick the color let me know that monogram only or, or name that I get to pick the design. Me picking the design allows me to have a little bit more flexibility, pick things that I think that the majority of folks when they're shopping would like. Um, so that's what these are gonna be. And I'm actually getting ready to stitch these today. Um, somebody actually um, in my group got them for, um, their three kids and they're gonna put them in their Easter baskets. I thought that was cute. But these are um, cosmetic bags, the waffle cosmetic bags. So I thought those were super cute and I wanted to add those to my shop. Um, oh, I, I missed these. So this is a really kind of fun way to do it. Um, now this, the money will be on me. So this is, this is at a loss. But these are so cute. These little baby gowns. Oh my goodness. This one's like animal print. And then they have this just adorable little hat that has the, a bow on it. And what's cool about it is it comes with a fabric swatch. So I'm going to do an applique monogram on it. So I've got three different styles that I really do think are super cute and I would love to put in my shop. 
But these three items aren't necessarily what my Facebook group, this isn't really their style. And I just know that because I know them so well. I know what they love. I know what they are looking for. And these aren't necessarily it, but I love them. And I think they will do well on Etsy because Etsy is a much broader audience than my, my small Facebook group. So what I am doing with these, I have done a little bit of research on baby items and bestsellers on Etsy are generally the items that are literally on a baby, not a flat lay, not a mock-up, but a outfit that's been monogrammed, name embroidered or whatnot, and it's on the baby. For some reason, those are what all the best sellers are. So with that in mind, I've reached out to a group that um, they take quality product photos in exchange for the merchandise. So I will stitch this out. So I reached out to a group that I have been part of for several years. I don't use it that often but they are photographers and basically it's like, I do this, I make this for you and you give me quality pictures back. So it's a win-win on both sides. So I reached out and I found a baby that's newly born um, and I'm actually giving her all three of these. They will all have the same initials on them. Um, and in return, I'll be mailing these to her and in return she keeps them. She gets to have these for her child and then she sends me quality professional photographs of them that I'll be able to use for my listings. So this is a little more costly when you do it like this, um, but there are certain items that I know in the long run it will pay off. So doing doing a group like that is, is an option. Um, another option, this, this is a pillow, and again, I don't have the insert in it, but this is, I was test stitching for a digitizer. So if you ever have the opportunity to test stitch for a digitizer, I would jump all on it if, if it's designs that you know, go along with the things that you sell. So how cute was this? I just knew that was so sweet. So I made this, um, test stitched it and I did it for, for my own family. So this is a, a pillow. Um, it just doesn't have the insert in it right now, but I didn't have to pay, um, you know, for the design. The design was given to me by the digitizer so that I could test it out and make sure that it, it, it was digitized well and stitched out well. So that's another option for samples because then this in turn turns into a sample for my own group and um, things that I can sell as well. For me, that was kind of time consuming. Um, a lot of the digitizers will have um, a certain number that they want you to do within a month's time. So if you have the availability and a little bit extra time to, to work on that and, and you do have quality you know, pictures, um, it's something to look into. Most of the time they will do like a, a, a vetting of, of people that are interested and have you send your product photos to make sure they align with what they're looking for, but that's a great way to do samples as well. Um, this was another, you know, way I've done it. These I'm getting ready to stitch today. Um, heirloom blankets. I've never had these in my shop, but I just think it would be a great addition considering I do other baby items. Um, and I reached out in my group and did 25% off. So I'm still making money off of these, but it allowed me to go ahead and purchase four of them, the four colors that I think are most popular and then I'll send these out to a customer after I take the quality pictures with them. So this was just a 25% off sample sale. And again, sample sale, um, they're gonna be a really good addition you know, to my shop and these will literally go to someone that can use them and they just think it's so awesome because they've gotten a deal on them. And um, like I said, a win-win. So a lot of these options are really win-wins for everybody. And again, I really like if I'm going to stitch something out, I like for someone to be able to use it. I like for it to have a purpose. Um, these are, like I said, good options um, in the beginning um, for you to stitch some things out. Um, if there was a way to display these, you know, like in your shop, that would be kind of cool if you do have a brick and mortar. Um, but most of us are just stitching at home. Um, but it, it, it is a good way. What I don't do, never have, um, is, is mock-up photos. Um, you can buy um, backdrops that you can, um, on your computer with like Photoshop, put a mock-up of designs. Um, I don't feel like that is the, the professional way to do it. There's so many other options out there of truly stitching it out yourself, making sure it's a good design. The last thing you want to do is put a mock-up of something you've never stitched and then someone purchases it. And then when you stitch it out, you're like, oh my gosh, this design is 
awful. You don't want that to happen. So I just really encourage people, um, mock-ups to me, when you're talking about embroidery, isn't necessarily the best way to go. If you're doing um, SVG files and, and, um, and, and things like that, then, then possibly that, that, that makes a little bit more sense. But when it comes to embroidery, I really think actually stitching out the product and having the real product uh, that you have stitched out in your pictures is key whether it be that someone else took the pictures for you um you know a photographer which is pretty awesome um or if it's just something you're carrying around because you think it's super cute there's so many different options there's so many different you know creative ways to do things and i hope this helps you kind of get your creative juices going and and trying to figure out what will work best for you if you have any questions, if you find value in this, I'd love for you to comment below, like this video, and share it with anyone that you think might need to see it today. Y'all have fun stitching and have fun making those samples.